Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now we've been hearing quite a lot of rumors about a new chip called the Qualcomm Snapdragon 1000. Qualcomm recently announced the Qualcomm Snapdragon 850, which is designed for uh, Windows laptops. And so there's lots of interest about what could be happening in the future with Qualcomm's chips and with laptops that use ARM-based processors, but yet are running Windows 10. So if you wanna find out more about the Snapdragon 1000, please, let me explain. Let's start with some context. This year is the first year we've been able to buy proper Windows 10 laptops running on an ARM-based processor rather than based on an x86 processor from Intel or from AMD. Now, of course, in the past, we've had things like the Windows RT, whole fiasco that happened, but this is really the first time that you've been able to take a laptop and use it like a normal Windows laptop, but it's not running on an x86 processor. Now, there are some limitations to running Windows 10 on these laptops. The biggest one being, of course, if you're trying to actually run x86 binaries on that laptop, there has to be a kind of a translation process. Now, that obviously affects performance. Uh, and of course, you can recompile apps so that they are actually built for x86 and for ARM. And there have been some missing pieces in that whole equation, but almost daily things are getting much, much better. But there have been a couple of other big problems with this. One, of course, has been the price. Uh, these laptops have been kind of six, seven, eight hundred dollars uh, each, and we're kind of used to thinking about, you know, like Chromebooks that kind of run an ARM processor being, you know, much, much more half that price really. So they haven't been really kind of the thing you could get as a level entry uh, way of saying, oh, I'm going to get an ARM-based laptop, and that will be that will be really good. And the other question has been around performance, even for when apps are compiled for a native uh, ARM support, they don't seem to be as fast as people wanted. Now, of course, the first generation of these laptops has been using the Snapdragon 835, which is basically taken out of phones like the uh, Samsung S8 or the Note 8 and, and literally just put inside of a laptop. And that transition hasn't worked too well in terms of actual overall performance. But on the positive side, on a big plus side, the battery life has been phenomenal. And we are talking verified actual 20 hours plus on one charge of the battery. In fact, I was following someone on uh, Twitter recently who decided to take away his laptop for, his ARM-based laptop for the whole uh, weekend and he wanted to see if he could not get his charger out of his backpack at all. And that seems to have actually been what happened. And in the last year, Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon 845, which has a significant performance boost compared to the 835. And now uh, Qualcomm have announced the Snapdragon 850, which is basically a Snapdragon 845 put into a slightly different package. Uh, and the, the frequency has been uh, bumped up a bit. So that means it can just give out just that little bit more heat. But I spoke to Qualcomm about it and it basically is a Snapdragon 845. All the major, there's no major changes inside. It's just that frequency tweak and all the other changes they talk about are in the software for optimization, which basically means uh, nothing at all. It's just a Snapdragon 845 in a new, uh, in a new package. Now, I don't want to give any disrespect to the 845. It's a great chip. And actually, the, any laptops that will use it today will have a significant performance increase compared to the 835. But there's something even better on the horizon. And what that is, of course, is the Snapdragon 1000. Now, the rumor is saying that Qualcomm are going to design a processor specifically for laptops. That means a CPU and a GPU and all the memory interconnects and the caches and everything else specifically aimed at the laptop market. And it will not work in a uh, smartphone or in a smartphone kind of setup. So when we're talking about smartphones, we're talking about maybe four watts of thermal budget. But when we're dealing with these low end sort of ultra thin laptops, we're talking about maybe 10 watts or 12 watts or even 15 watts of thermal budget. So that allows the chip maker to play around more with the power, play around with the frequency and play around with other things that generate heat on the chip so that it can, of course, be dis dissipated through the larger metal frame and maybe even a small fan, which is not something you often find, of course, on any device that's using a kind of an ARM based processor. Now, the current thinking is that the Snapdragon 1000 will use the new Cortex A76 CPU core. Of course, it won't be called that. Qualcomm have a special license 
that allow them to take the Cortex A76 and tweak it in various different ways and market it under the Cryo brand as long as somewhere in all the marketing it says built on Cortex technology, which basically gives away the fact it's a Cortex uh, processor from ARM, but Qualcomm have been able to tweak it to uh, change things that they want to change in it so it delivers the performance that they are looking for. Now, when ARM recently announced the Cortex A76, they did heavily focus on this idea of laptop performance. And that's now starting to make sense because it hasn't been long after the, the announcement that we hear rumors of Qualcomm working on a laptop-based processor. Now, of course, Qualcomm are a major partner with ARM, and of course, they get access to what's happening and they get early access to the designs, you know, like last year, 18 months ago, they've been working in collaboration. And of course, now we're seeing the fruit of this which could be the Snapdragon 1000. So here are some of the things that ARM said they would like to recommend if someone was building a laptop class processor. So the first thing they would like to see is the Cortex A76 running at greater than three gigahertz uh, clock frequencies, and of course built on a seven nanometer process. Now the Cortex A76 cores will be coupled with some Cortex A55 cores, which of course are the power efficient cores. So it would really be four A76 and four A55. But to get that maximum sort of performance out of the A55, ARM are recommending that the L2 cache on the 55 is bumped up to the maximum. And just for some context here, we see the current Snapdragon 845 only uses 128K of L2 cache, and that can be bumped up significantly higher. And talking of caches, there is now an L3 cache when you're using a dynamic uh, setup, and I've got a whole video on dynamic over at the Android Authority uh, website. Now, when you're using dynamic, there's an L3 cache, and ARM recommend that that's a four megabyte L3 cache that services all of the cores in that dynamic setup. And again, for some context, the Snapdragon 845 uses only two megabytes of L3 cache. So of course there is room there for another two megabytes of L3 cache, and that will significantly bump up the performance. And the other thing you need, of course, is good fast access to the uh, RAM. Probably it's going to be LPDDR4 RAM, but it needs to have multiple memory channels so you get the best throughput out to RAM. Now, if we look here at this graph, we can see that ARM are suggesting a between 1.9 and uh, 2.1 performance increase. But if you look down here at the bottom, you can see that that's compared to a Cortex A73 and the A75 there, but the A76 is leveled at running at 3.3 gigahertz with 512K of L2 cache and four megabytes of uh, L3 cache. Now, of course, increasing all these cache sizes makes the chip physically bigger and makes the chip a bit more expensive. And one of the interesting bits of rumors that are floating around about the Snapdragon 1000 is that it's physically gonna be about twice the size of the current Snapdragon uh, 845. And mainly you can pretty much guess that's because they wanna stick more cache on there. So you've got the four megabytes of L3 cache, individually all those processes on there, L2 cache are gonna be bumping up, you know, even up to, as we saw there, 512K, and that just physically takes up a lot of space. So what does all this mean? What it all means is that hopefully Qualcomm are designing a laptop specific processor. It's based on the Cortex A76. It will have an Adreno uh, GPU in it. But in that Cortex A76 design, there will be lots of level two cache, level three cache, and they'll be able to tweak up the clock frequency up to let's say 3.3 gigahertz. Now that's gonna make it run hotter Okay, but that's okay because they're happy for this to be maybe a 10 watt or a 12 watt power, uh, thermal package of which they can stick into a laptop. You've got the whole metal frame maybe that can have to dissipate the heat, maybe a small fan, but you're gonna get the performance, but probably there's not gonna be a massive uh, impact on that already verified and uh, working 20 hours of battery life. We're still gonna see those kind of figures, but we're gonna see greater performance. So personally, I'm really looking forward to seeing some official announcements about the Snapdragon 1000. My guess is we could see it even 
as early as the end of this year, so that's December 2018. That is when kind of traditionally Qualcomm announced new processors that are coming in the following year because then you've got sort of MWC coming up and companies start to announce phones that are running on Qualcomm's latest processors. And maybe we'll see kind of at CES or maybe at uh, MWC some laptops being announced using new processors from Qualcomm. So my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Love to hear your thoughts on the Snapdragon 1000 down there in the comments. I always read every single comment and I reply it whenever I can. Also, can I ask please that you subscribe to the channel and that also you share this video on social media. Okay, well that's about it. So I'll see you in the next one.